Yeah, thanks so, thanks so much for joining us, Senator Duckworth, uh, uh, by WebEx. And uh, second round for Senator Markey, and then we're going to have to wrap up. I, I need to leave fairly soon. Okay, but beautiful. Go right, go right ahead, please. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman, very much. Um, so again, I just want to come back to the point that I had made earlier, which is that um, there are 9,000 leases on federal lands, offshore and onshore, that the um, oil and gas industry have already won and purchased. And if they wanted to drill, they should have been drilling. Of course, they didn't. Um, but to come in then and say they need more leases when they haven't even used the ones that they've already purchased from us, well, you know, w that would be foolish on the part of the American taxpayer um, because they should either lose it, use it, or lose it. Use the ones you have or lose them. Give them back to us, okay, before you start asking for more leases that you are going to be using. And again, there's 6,000 uh, other uh, partially drilled um, um, f uh, uh, operations all around the country that they've just stopped. They're already permitted, those 6,000. They're not drilling on them right now either. So just show us some good faith and start drilling there. You already got the permit. Just if you really care about it, st stop asking for more when you haven't even used what you've already got, especially the ones that are already um, half drilled, already um, partially drilled. Get to work. Get us that oil and gas. But don't say we're stopping you. We're, we, the, the Democrats on this committee are not stopping you. Go and do it anytime you want. And, uh, and again, when it, when it comes to um, uh, the... Um, Renewable revolution, which we keep hearing, uh, is, uh, is not the answer. Well, here's the good news. Renewables are cheaper, and their prices are stable, and we actually can't say the same thing about oil and gas that we can say in, say in terms of the, the pricing. And 90% uh, of electricity waiting to be connected in the United States is renewables. Can I say that again? 90% of all electricity waiting to be connected in our country is renewables right now. So uh, if I may, because I can see you have a superior educational background at Boston College, um, Ms. Uh, Stankin, uh, could you comment on that? Am I accurate in my analysis? Yes, Boston College, great university. Go, go Eagles. <laughs> I appreciate your accent too, but it takes me right back. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, renewables, they're ready to be connected to the grid right now, and that's going to power our electric transportation future. And I'd just like to point out too, you were talking about the level playing field. Well, the United States spends annually $80 billion defending our, our oil investments. And China right now has invested $60 billion over the past decade for their transportation electrification future. So we've got you know $80 billion in one year here and $60 billion over the decade that China has been doing to take the commanding lead with transportation electrification. I mean, let's let's talk uh, about the, the level playing field. So what you're saying is when you're deploying wind and solar here in the United States, we actually don't need the United States military deployed as they are in the Middle East to make sure that those tankers can come. That's exactly what I'm and, saying. Absolutely. And that doesn't fully get factored in at all, or it doesn't get factored in at all. Mm -hmm. They want to pretend as though that's just some, like greenhouse gases are an externality. They really shouldn't be counted so too is the military budget of our country. Mm -hmm. So much of it disproportionately targeted towards the Middle East, where coincidentally the oil uh, that uh, we import is coming from. So, uh, so can you expand upon that just a little bit more? Sure, yeah. I mean, the electricity that's powering electric vehicles, um, that is being generated domestically here in the United States. It is cleaner, it is safer, it is uh, more reliable here. Um, we're creating great, excellent jobs here by expanding the, you know, as Jim could say too, by expanding our electric generation here. And there was actually a report done by the Department of Energy in 2019 that showed that annually we are putting on about an additional 12 gigawatts of electricity generation onto the grid that can more than meet the demand of the electric vehicles coming on. No, and I agree with you 100%. Uh, we now actually generate 200,000 megawatts of renewables a year in the United States. Back in 2009, when Joe Biden and Barack Obama were being sworn in. It was 2,000 megawatts of solar total mm -hmm. in history and 25,000 megawatts of wind. Now we're up to 200,000. So it wasn't as though all of a sudden it got windier or sunnier. It's just that we got a lot of those 
um, obstacles at the state and federal level out of the way. And there's still more work to be done, but it includes um, ensuring that we're incentivizing transmission lines so we can get it uh, to, from where it's being generated, wind and solar, to where it's needed, and that we also pass those tax breaks for the generation of wind and solar onshore and offshore. And I will add that we also passed the bill uh, that is still pending, President Biden's bill, uh, for about $40 billion worth of tax breaks to, to actually manufacture the wind and solar here in the United States. Um, that's critical as well, so that we can just say made in America uh, for wind and solar as it comes down and we capture it, and then the workers uh, actually manufacture all the technologies that accomplish that goal. So it's all there, uh, and nothing, and it has nothing to do with any longer with Russia, or with the Middle East. You know, we are energy independent if we do that. But of course, that's gonna be blocked. And who will be blocking it? Who will be trying to stop it? It'll be the oil and gas and coal industry because they know that if we get the same subsidies, the same opportunities that the other industries did, uh, that uh, we will see this technological revolution unfold. So I thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, very much for the opportunity to have a second round and uh, I yield back. You bet. Thank